someone told me one time that, that the idea of sin, transgressing God's law, is not so much a measurement of how bad I am, but how good I'm not. God is perfect. So I could walk around thinking, man, compared to my cameraman, I might be all that. But what if the standard's actually infinitely higher? What if the standard's perfect, right? We'd all be in major trouble because we've lied, we've stolen, we've hated people, I'm sure, right? So if God sees my heart, then he must judge people righteously. You see, the judge is there to uphold justice, right? You would agree? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, girls, how does then the just judge of the universe, how does he both uphold his justice but show us and demonstrate his love for us by forgiving us? How does he do both things? How does a judge let a guilty criminal walk free without compromising justice? Well, hey, welcome to The Equipping Evangelist. I'm Corey McKenna, and I serve as founding president of The Cross Current, Equipping Evangelists, and Go Teams Media, that conversational evangelism program you were just watching. Now, Go Teams Media is the newest gospel outreach media ministry of the Cross Current, specifically with young adults, for both conversing and connecting on the three big questions that matter most. Now, in the last episode of this podcast, I challenged all Christians to get the gospel in you. Because Christians, you got to know it to share it. So if you missed that episode, the last episode of the podcast, you will definitely want to go back and listen. But in this episode, I want to dive deeper into a recent conversation on Go Teams Media that really highlights a huge, 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 did I say huge topic that's at the very core of every gospel conversation. Check it out. Do you know what God did to both satisfy his justice, in other words, uphold his goodness, but demonstrate his love for people and his forgiveness? You know what he did? Was it like when he died for our sins? Well, you picture the just judge of the universe. He's seen everything you've ever done. He's, he's, he's read your thoughts, right? He's watched your whole life. It's like a video. Mm-hmm. And the judge says, well, wow, Jocelyn, Jaden, I, and we'll stand alone, but he says, I should throw the book at you because you've done this stuff knowing it. But because I'm merciful, I do want to forgive you. The judge himself steps down from the bench. He lays down his life for me, for the accused. And if he were to do that, he has the power and authority. He can remit my death sentence. He can let me walk out of that courtroom free because it's all of grace. I didn't deserve that at all. But because he's loving, that's exactly what the gospel says. As a Christian, it's the good news that our perfectly just and gracious, loving God who continually blesses us, here's the day we have, He's looked upon hopelessly sinful people and he sent his son Jesus to bear his wrath in our place. And through his death on the cross, his sacrifice, he paid our fine with his life's blood so that God can rightfully dismiss our case. Jesus rose from the dead and now he says, wow, he's alive? He's he's seen by like 500 people. And now he says, it's not a matter of going to church, being Presbyterian, raised in in a Christian home. It's simply when I turn from my sin and put my faith in him alone to save me, he lifts my death sentence. He he gives me the gift of eternal life. And I don't fear death at all because he actually takes away that fear. Well, as an equipping evangelist, by God's grace, I share the gospel with a lot of people. And it's been my repeated experience that many sinners know that God is good. But very few sinners know that God's goodness is actually their greatest problem. What? What do you mean? Well, God is good. Scripture teaches that God is good, and that's wonderfully good news. But it's also terribly bad news, depending on where each individual sinner is standing today in relation to God. So what's the only possible way for God's goodness to turn from bad news to good news. Let me ask that question again. What's the only possible way for God's goodness to turn from bad news to good news? Well, the answer is found in Christ and his gospel. And the problem of God's goodness, if I could say it that way, is really, really through one all-important word in Scripture. Here it is. Ready? Propitiation. Propitiation. 
what, what does that mean? We, there's a word we don't use very much. Well, I want to read that word in Scripture in context. In Romans chapter 3, verses 23 to 26, in the context of the gospel, God's word says this. Listen very carefully. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law, although the law and the prophets bear witness to it. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe, for there is no distinction for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over former sins. It was to show his righteousness at the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Wow. In just four lines of scripture, God himself tells us how he has both satisfied his justice, because that's important, right? His justice must be upheld and demonstrated his love for sinners. How? God put forward his own son as a propitiation. Again, what does that word mean? Well, a propitiation, by definition, is satisfying the righteousness of God, making it possible for him to show mercy righteously. A propitiation is a sacrifice that satisfies the wrath of God of God. And by God's own standards, please hear this, by God's own standards, only the one who has the right to condemn is the only one who can die. And that's God himself. So God becomes a man, Jesus Christ. Now, if you're ever talking with proponents from different cults, it's always sort of a ditch on either side of that narrow road, isn't it? It's either a warped view of the deity of Jesus or a warped view of the humanity of Jesus. But scripture teaches Jesus Christ must be a God-man. Why? Well, why did Jesus have to be a man? Well, because death came through one man, Adam, and so life must come through another man, a son of man. That's Jesus Christ. And why did Jesus have to be God? Well, because as the judge of all men, right, he can only be the creator of all men or, again, a God-man, and that is Jesus Christ. You know, Christians, the, the, the heart of the gospel, which simply means good news, is really summed up in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, this is a great memory verse for gospel conversations. It says this, For our sake he made him to be sin. God the Father made God the Son him to be sin only in one sense. Here's what it says. So that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That is the very heart and essence of the gospel. How does God be both the just and the justifier? Well, by the one who has faith in Jesus Christ. You know, illustratively, what I find, again, as an equipping evangelist, when we're talking to a non-Christian about the gospel, okay, we know that the only saving gospel, yes, initially justifies, continually sanctifies, and eventually glorifies. But when this, this person is not in relationship with God through Christ, they are on the sort of justification path. They need their case dismissed. Okay, so what we find is that illustrating gospel truth in the context of a courtroom is very powerful and, uh, and very much in contact with the conversation. So illustratively, the gospel kind of looks like this. You are standing alone before the just judge of the universe. He has seen your thoughts. He's heard your words. He's watched every action like a movie. He has that video of your entire life. And because he's so good and so righteous and so holy, one single violation of his law is sufficient. It means you break all of it. And God can't be bribed. He's not a corrupt judge. He's a perfectly just and righteous judge. And so there's this problem. How does God both uphold his justice, but demonstrate love and forgiveness? He himself steps down from the bench and lays down his life for the accused. God so loved the world, he sent his only son, 
so that whoever believes in him, trusts in him, okay, will receive eternal life. Why? Because then the fine has been paid. Jesus said, it is finished, means paid in full. Case dismissed. So that is how God can both satisfy his justice and demonstrate his love. What's the only way possible for God's goodness to turn from bad news to good news? Through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ on the cross. Because at the cross, God satisfied his justice and demonstrated his love because the cross of Christ is all of God and all of grace. So goodness, God's goodness is at the very heart of every gospel conversation. So in closing, to watch weekly episodes of Go Teams Media, go to goteamsmedia.com and uh, click through the subscribe. You're going to see subscribe to go on our YouTube channel. And, uh, and I would just ask with all that in heart and mind, do you have any questions that I could help answer about evangelism and your church? I hope so. To submit those, go to theequippingevangelist.com, click on the Got Question, Get Answers button, and will you also please subscribe to and share this podcast with others? Please click that subscribe button below to listen every week and to get your entire church equipped for evangelism together, and then share this podcast to multiply gospel ministry in and through the body of Christ. Share this podcast with all of your Christian contacts, and may God bless you you and your church as you get equipped for evangelism together.